All right, dear students, we are practicing accruals and prepayments. And let us do few more exercises for that. On 1st September 2014, that is start of the year, uh, Ishmael Mokombo, so some strange name, maybe some African name, owed uh, 274 for motor expense. Now, basically, it is the start of the year and we owe, this means it is an accrued expense, okay? Because we have taken the services last year, but we haven't paid for that. Okay, we got our car repaired, but we haven't paid for to the garage yet. Okay, he paid this by check on 7 September. Uh, what we need to do, we need to make an expense account. Now, uh, let, uh, let me show you how to make an expense account. First September, we have owed. Owed means it's an accrued expense. Accrued expense is basically liability for the business. Therefore, balance BD would comes on the credit side. Okay. And if it was a prepaid expense, then the balance brought down would always come on the debit side. Now, uh, we paid this on check on when? On 7 September. Okay. So, whenever we are paying this expense, the entry would be expense or liability account would be debited and the bank account would be credited. So, we need to debit the expense account and we need to write cross reference it with bank. Okay. Expense is being debited and the bank is being credited. Now on 1st February, there's another transaction we have paid for motor expense by cash. Okay, so normally we write bank, but the, if the examiner clearly mentions the cash, so then and only then we are going to write cash, else we are going to write bank. So the entry would be motor expense would be debited again. Why? Because the expense has a debit nature. So whenever expense increases, we are going to debit it and the reference would be cash. Now at the end of the year, Ishmael received an invoice for motor expense 113. So basically we have just received the invoice. We haven't paid it yet. Instead, we paid it in September. Uh, but the thing is that our year is being ended in August. So therefore this has not yet been paid at the end of the year. So whenever we receive an invoice, so expense is there. Okay, expense account would be debited and we are going to credit the name of uh, our uh, the garage uh, that uh, get our car uh, repaired. Okay, if the name of the garage is not given, then we are going to write instead of writing the name of the supplier, we can write just payables. Okay, now what we need to do, we need to uh, balance this expense account. Now, as you can see, the greater side is the debit side. Now, whichever uh, the greater side is, uh, the greater side uh, balance goes to both of the sides. And as you may be aware that expense is debit in nature. But what happens at the end of the year, we need to credit that expense account and we need to transfer it to where an income statement. Okay. So from the bigger side 483, I'm going to subtract this 274 in order to get this income statement value. So this is basically how we make an expense account. How we make an expense account. So there is no balance carried down at the end of the year. So therefore there is no balance brought down either at the start of next accounting period. There is another exercise and these are all past paper questions. Question number six. Just give me a minute. In question number six, we have Paul. Paul's year is ending on December. This is the most uh, convenient date to make a question, examination question. If the year is being ending on December, then therefore it must have been started on 1st of January. He maintains one combined account for rent and rate. So we are not going to make separate account for both. Instead, there is a one combined account rent and rate. And rent and rate, my dear students, is an expense, as you may all be aware. Uh, on 1st January 2015, three months rates totaling 900 were prepaid. Now, at the start of the year, we have prepaid rates. So, uh, if we have, uh, what does rates mean? Rates means uh, there are local taxes, some property taxes by some local government. So, these are the prepaid expenses. And if we have paid the rates in advance, therefore, it is an asset for the business. So therefore, as you can see, the balance brought down is coming on the debit side. That is 900. Now, on the same date, four months rent totaling uh, 3200 that that was also prepaid. So as you can see, uh, we have uh, two balance brought downs. And instead of writing two separate balance brought downs, the examiner has written only one because there are uh, both of them are prepaid. 
so if instead one uh, of them was accrued then the balance brought down would come on the other side that is on the credit side now the total prepaid at the start of the year uh, is 4200 and this is already given now let us move further and we have two transactions on 1st April we have paid rates 3960 okay so whenever we are paying uh, going to pay for expenses the entry would be rent and rate would be debited and the bank account would be credited okay so this is 3960 now uh, we have paid rent also this year 4800 so the entry would be rent account would be debited and again the reference would be bank now what happens at the end of the year uh, we need to find uh, either we have an accrued expense at the end of the year or a prepaid expense now uh, as you can say, read this on 1st april we have paid rates for 12 months ending to march okay so uh, this means we have paid the rates for 31st march as well uh, for, from uh, 1st april to 31st march now as you can see the year is being ended on 31st december 2015 now uh, we need to count the months after december 15 so after december would come january february and march 2016 this means we have paid for more expenses than actually it was required okay so instead of paying till december 2015 we have actually paid for january 2016 now the three extra months that we have paid rates would be an prepaid expense okay so prepaid opening would co goes on the debit side then the closing prepaid would goes on the credit side so this is prepaid balance cd rates so the total expenses that we have paid is 3960 and this is for how many months uh, this is for 12 months uh, now, now how can we say it's for 12 months uh, it's already written we have paid for 12 months from april 2015 till march 2016 so uh, the three months for 2016 would be prepaid now what we need to do we need to do 3 upon 12 on this 3960 if i divide 3960 by 12 months i'll be getting one month uh, let me do the calculation for you uh, if we divide 3960 uh, this is for total 12 months if i divide it by 12 months so one month rate would be 330 and if i multiply 330 by 3 i would get a 990 prepaid okay now what happens about uh, rent either the rent is accrued or prepaid we paid the rent on 1st may and 4800 and this was actually was for six months and we have just paid the rent till october but we have used this uh, premises for uh, till december okay now as you can see after october what comes november and december now we have just paid the rent till october but uh, as you can see the year has been passed so our last two months november and december would be an accrued expense okay and how can we calculate how much uh, that would be if i divide 4800 by six months so the monthly rental would be 800 and i need to multiply it with two months in order to get two months uh, accrued rent okay so accrued expense my dear students is basically liability for the business if the opening liability would go on the credit side because the nature for liability is credit then the closing liability always comes on the debit side okay so we need to write balance cd and out of this 4800 six months rent basically one third or 2.6 uh, rent would be uh, accrued expense okay so uh, we uh, learned a mnemonic pwap prepaid accrued accrued and prepaid okay so the opening prepaid would go go on the debit side then the if there was a closing prepaid it would goes on the credit side then the opening accrued would goes on the credit side and the closing accrued would go on the debit side now we are not going to write accrued or prepaid in the exam instead we are just going to write balance brought down and carried down okay now as you can see rent and rate is an expense and the nature for expense is debited now what we need to do we need to uh, credit the rent and rate account at the end of the year and we need to transfer it to where we need to transfer it to a special account known as income statement okay so this means this is the total rent and rate for the current year and how uh, did i get this value i need to total both of the sides now the bigger side is obviously the debit side and the bigger side would goes on both of the sides and i need to deduct this 990 prepaid in order to get this value income statement value 
this would go as an expense in the income statement after gross profit now this balance carried down my dear students will become balance brought down at the start of the year and this balance carried down 1600 would uh, be balance brought down at the start of next year now there are two balances rates are basically prepaid it is a pop account prepaid uh, if it's coming on the debit side it is a prepaid expense and rent is accrued expense this means we haven't paid the rent for last two months but we have paid uh, uh, rates in advance for the three months okay now let us do some uh, other types of questions as well there are some other types of questions also in the examination this is similar you can uh, go through this by yourself let us go for question number eight and the name is katie the name of the owner is katie now in this question what's new in this question so instead of just making one account for expense the examiner has made two separate accounts one is for expense and another one is for supplier liability account okay so there are two basically accounts one for expense and one for supplier now let me read the question for you katie the trader she maintains a full set of accounting records her year is ending on april okay so if the year is being ending on april then the year must have been started on first of may katie's transaction for the year ended 30 april 2016 now uh, if this year is ending on april 16 then this year that was ended on april 16 must have been started on first may 2015 okay why because first may 2016 would be the next year okay new year now what we need to do let us see the requirement first we need to make two separate accounts one for stationary and another one for a1 stationers a1 stationers is basically a supplier whom we buy stationary on credit and stationary is basically our expense so we need to make two separate accounts one for expense and another one for supplier okay we need to make uh, two accounts simultaneously because these are both uh, one requirement and even if the examiner asks for two separate requirements in part a it asks for expense account and in part b it asks for supplier accounts so as you know these both are related so we are going to solve it simultaneously so this would make better sense in order to complete the double entry now let us see opening balance is the opening balance already given yes as you can see in the stationary account a balance bd is on the debit side this means it is an expense account and in an expense account if balance bd is coming on the debit side therefore it is a prepaid expense okay so what does this mean basically this means uh, that we have bought some extra stationery last year that was not used okay and we are going to use it in the this in this year current year so therefore it is a prepaid stationery it is an asset for the business okay unused stationery it's an asset for the business now let us uh, do the transactions on may 12 we have paid cash for stationery 95 therefore we have bought some new stationery on cash so the entry would be stationary account would be debited why whenever an expense is incurred it is debit and as you can know as you can see we have already paid for that so we are going to write reference of cash because the examiner mentions cash specifically uh, and then on 10 9th of july we have paid for paid even stationers by check the balance due on first may now as you can see even stationer is a supplier and as you can see uh, we already have some liability for A1 stationers. So the liability is 114. So the balance brought down is always uh, on credit because it's a liability. And whenever we pay for the liability, the entry would be A1 stationer would be debited and the bank account would be credited. Okay, A1 stationer would be debited and the bank account would be credited. So actually we paid for this liability, A1 debit and bank account would be credited. Then after that uh, let us go for some other transactions and the third transaction we have purchased stationery on credit from a1 now if we are buying stationery for a1 therefore uh, stationery it is an expense and as you can see we have purchased the stationery on credit therefore we haven't paid for the stationery yet 
so uh, this would double entry would goes on both of the sides now the stationery is an expense and the expense account would be debited now as you can see we haven't paid for this stationery yet therefore it is a liability as well so the double entry would be stationery would be debited and the a1 stationers account would be credited because a1 is the supplier and what uh, we, we can do we also need to record this transaction in a1 account why because the liability is being increased so the entry is stationery would be debited and a1 supplier would be credited okay in the stationery expense account we are going to cross reference it with a1 stationers account and the a1 stationers account need to be cross referenced with stationery account okay in an expense account we are going to write the reference of supplier and in a supplier account we need to write the reference of expense now uh, after that we return some of the stationery to a1 stationers for 53 now if we are returning stationery therefore our liability would go down obviously we are not going to pay for the uh, stationery that was damaged maybe okay so uh, the liability would be debited now okay uh, whenever the liability increases it is credit and if the liability is being decreased so the liability would be debited so the a1 account would be debited and we need to write the reference of stationery and in the stationery account would be credited why because the stationery is going down okay basically the expense is being uh, decreased why be because we have bought two and seven dollar worth of stationery and out of that uh, this was maybe uh, not a uh, uh in proper use or maybe it was a faulty so therefore we returned it and this will reduce our stationary expense so basically the entry is being reversed the stationary would be credited and a1 account would be debited this time now at the end of the year as you can see some of the stationery is left inventory of stationery means it is a prepaid uh, expense we, we have bought a uh, more stationery than actually required and now we need to uh, keep this uh in safe so therefore we can use it in the next accounting period so now the prepaid stationery is, a, uh, is an asset for the business now the opening balance would be debited and the closing balance would be credited it would come on the opposite side okay now let us balance this now as you can st see stationery is an expense basically and the nature for expense is debit now what we need to do at the end of the year we need to total both of the sides now as you can see the greater side is again debit side uh, so the debit side greater side would comes on both of the sides and the difference between the two the balancing figure uh, would be transferred to an income statement why because the actual amount of stationery that we have used this year w was 245 and need to need to be transferred it as an expense for the year in the income statement now how can uh, how could we get this amount uh, we need to deduct uh, 196 and 53 from the greater side in order to get this balancing figure now this balance carried down prepaid stationery would be used in the next year obviously we are not going to throw away this we are going to use it in the next accounting period so after april would becomes first may 2016 this time okay so this is how we make an expense account and we have already uh, made the uh, second part also the a1 supplier account we need to balance this now as you may be aware that supplier is a liability and the nature for liability is always credit therefore the bigger side would be the credit side and the bigger side would goes on both of the sides in order to find the closing balance that is balance cd okay this balance carried down uh, is a closing balance that would become balance brought down at the start of next accounting period so therefore it is a liability so i hope you understood how to make two separate accounts uh, one for expense and one for uh, liability uh, we have another question of this type and okay let us do one more question last question for this expense account and we have a question number nine cie examination question maria maria had the following balances on first may 2014 uh, we have an amount payable midland telecom Medland Telecom is basically a telephone company that is providing us telephone services. Now what we need to do in, in this question, we need to make two separate accounts, one for Medland Telecom, therefore it is a supplier, okay, our ISP internet service provider or telephone service provider. And the second account that we need to make is a telephone expense account, okay. So we need to make two separate accounts, one for expense and one for our supplier whom 
we are getting these telephone services from okay so it's better to make both these accounts simultaneously in order to understand the double entry behind the scene okay so first of all we need to write the opening balance now as you can see the opening balance is already given and the opening balance is given for what only for midland telecom okay on the first may it's basically opening so we need to write the opening balance for midland telecom basically it's a supplier therefore it is uh, written payable so supplier has always a credit nature so the balance brought down for midland telecom was 400 therefore this is the bill that we haven't paid for uh, and it belonged to the previous year previous month that is unpaid yet okay now there is no opening balance given for telephone expense so we can uh, move uh, further and on the 31st of may we paid for midland telecom balance on first may by check so basically the bill that was outstanding 400 we paid this this year okay so whenever we are going to pay for liability then the liability would be debited okay so the liability would be debited and the reference would be bank Medland would be debited and the reference would be bank. Now on 26th of June, what happened uh, to the next transaction? Let us see. Uh, we have received a telephone bill from Medland Telecom. So when do we get a bill from the telephone company? Uh, actually, we have used the services and we have used the telephone. Then and only then we can receive a bill. So therefore, it is an expense for the business. So as you can see, we have just received the bill and we haven't paid the bill yet. Okay. So the entry would comes on both of the sides. The expense would be debited. Why? Whenever an expense increase, it is going to be debited and the supplier Medland account would be credited. Okay. So we are going to debit the expense account and we need to cross reference it with Midland Telecom that is our supplier. And we need to credit the Midland Telecom and we need to write the opposite reference that is telephone expense. Okay. Now, as you can see in the expense account, we need to write the reference for Midland that is a supplier. And in a supplier account, we are going to write the reference, opposite reference. And if by mistake, we have written the same reference in an expense account, we wrote telephone expense as a reference. So this would be wrong. Okay. You won't be awarded any marks for that. Then after that, uh, on 15th of July, we have paid telephone bill that was received on 26 June by check less 2% cash discount. So what happens uh, whenever we uh, actually, we, this is not some new bill, the bill that was received earlier on 26 June, we are just going to pay for that bill. Okay, today. So whenever we are going to pay for our liability, then the liability would be debited. Now, as you can see, uh, there is a 2% cash discount as well. We have studied cash discount earlier. So there are two types of cash discount. One is uh, discount allowed and one is discount received. Okay. So whenever our customers are going to pay us earlier than they promise, then we are going to give them a discount and it is a discount allowed and it is an expense for the business. And what happens? Uh, if we are paying our suppliers earlier than promise, then uh, it will be a discount received and the discount received is an income for the business. Now, in this case, it will be a discount received. Why? Because we are paying the telephone provider earlier. Therefore, we are getting a 2% discount. Now, as you can see, the total bill of 26 June was 1200. And uh, if we paid them early, then we are going to receive 2% discount. 1200 times 2 percent would be 24 and now we are going to pay 24 less than previously so the liability would be debited midland would be debited and discount receive account would be credited okay discount receive is an income therefore it would be credited and midland supplier account would be debited now if i deduct 24 from this 1200 value i am left with 1176 now the entry would be midland would be debited and the bank account would be credited okay now let us move further and the last transaction is we need to prepare the income statement for the quarter that is three months and it was estimated that 130 was owing. Now just remember whenever we have an accrued owing or prepaid advance, uh, these accrued and prepaid always go in an expense or income account. Okay. And if there is an accrued expense at the end of the year, therefore it is a liability. This means we have used the telephone service, but we haven't received the bill yet. So therefore it is a liability. 
and a nature for liability is always credit then the opening balance for liability would goes on the credit side then the closing balance would goes on the debit side so therefore it is a liability 130 now uh, now let me uh, close this account so whenever we are going to close this uh, it is a liability normally liability uh, has a credit side that is greater but in this case as you can see both of the sides are equal and why are these being equal the, the the reason for that is we had a 400 previous outstanding balance that we paid for this year and we have received another bill for 1200 uh, and that is also paid okay so there are no outstanding telephone bills and these are uh, this uh, supplier account is balanced now let me total the telephone expense account as you can see expense is debit in nature as you may be aware uh, the, whenever we uh, uh, total it the greater side would be debit and what we need to do at the end of the year we need to transfer it to where uh, income statement okay so this is the telephone expense for uh, the three month period 1330 out of that 1200 bill has already been received and 130 we have estimated that this is an expense that we have used uh, the telephone for this much amount and the bill has not yet been received yet okay so again uh, even if the bill has not been received we can estimate the liability and we can book it as an expense and as a liability as well and this balance cd for accrued would becomes balance brought down at the start of next accounting period after july would go uh, after july would become first of august okay so this would be a balance brought down so this was how to make an expense account and these were the underlying concepts accruals and prepayment there is another requirement as well name and explain the accounting concept in estimating the telephone expense so my dear students whenever uh, we uh, do these adjustments relating to accruals and prepayment therefore it is a account there is a special accounting concept for that known as matching concept uh, also it was previously known as accruals concept now what is the matching concept states matching concept my dear student states that income and expenses shall be matched okay what is matching concept states beta matching concept states income and expenses shall be matched now uh, for the same accounting period now whenever we say we should match income and expense uh, i am not referring it to matching the amount of income and expense that uh, if one is earning one lakh the expense should also be one lakh so if the revenue and expenses are both same therefore we are not going to earn any profit uh, the the matching concept basically says we are not going to match the amount of income and expense instead we are going to match the timing of income and expense now what does this mean this means that the expenses shall be recorded uh, if we have used the service no matter whether we have received the bill or we have paid for the expenses yet or not okay so income and expenses uh, shall be recorded in the period to which they relate and not in the period in which cash is actually received or paid okay so matching concept says that we are not going to worry about the actual date of payment or receipt of cash instead we are going to worry about uh, matching the income and expense okay if the income belongs to this year uh, this should be recorded this year no matter whether we have received the uh, payment or not and if the expense belongs to this year again the, that shall be recorded this year no matter uh, whether if we have paid for the expenses or not so how to write this in an examination to match the telephone expense incurred in the period to income earned in the period okay we are going to match the income and expenses that belong to the same accounting period so we are done with uh, understanding accruals and prepayment uh, relating to expense and in the next lesson inshallah we are going to do uh, accrued and prepaid income and we'll be understanding what does accrued and prepaid income means and how to make the account for that and how to uh, adjust our financial statement for accrued and prepaid income